All right, so again, here's the problem that I'm solving. I'm going to switch over to my whiteboard cam and uh, stop sharing here, and you can watch me do this problem. What we're trying to solve for is the total charge inside of that charge distribution. Good, we're focused ish. So you can kind of see there at the top, that's the charge distribution I'm working with. Okay. I'm going to start by drawing a diagram, which is almost always the first thing that anyone should ever do. This is a diagram of my coordinate system, my X, my Y, my Z. Oh, Professor, could you zoom out the camera a little bit so we could, um, yeah, sorry, thank you. I'm not sure if I can actually zoom out any further, but I will make sure not to, you know, take up too much space here. Um, and what I have is I have a sphere of radius one meter. So I'll just draw my best approximation of a sphere. So far, that's what we've got. My charge distribution is up here at the top of the screen. And I would like to know the total charge contained in that sphere. Here's how we're going to do it. We have to do an integral at the most basic level with no additional in information or substitution involved. We just have to do the integral of dq over the region that contains the charge. But we have more information than that. We can write down that that equals the integral from uh, over the sphere of the volume charge density dv. That's a little bit more information. To add more information, we can start substituting in the things that we know here. Up here in this square, I have the value of that volume charge distribution, so I can put that in. But what is dv? Well, we're integrating over a sphere. This is expressed using r, little r here, so that kind of indicates that we're working in spherical coordinates. So the next thing that I should do is write down dv in spherical coordinates. Now you all worked this out, but if you remember, uh, if I were to write down my little differential volume element, it has dimension dr in the radial direction, r d theta in the theta dimension and r sine theta d phi in the phi dimension. And then you end up with a sort of bent little cube like that. So my dv and rho v get substituted into this integral. And I can write down that it equals the integral from r equals 0 to 1 the entire range of phi, so it's going to be phi equals 0 to 2 pi, the entire range of theta, so theta equals 0 to pi. So far, so good. Now I can write down rho v, e to the minus 2 r over r squared. And then I can write down dv, which is if you remember, r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. Ooh, went off the screen a tiny bit there. Professor, quick question. Yeah. Just for like food for thought, could we also instead uh, evaluate it where phi goes only to pi, where theta goes to 2 pi? You could, but you would have to define your differential volume element a little differently, I think. Uh, actually, no, you, that would not necessarily work. If we did theta to 2 pi, we go around. But if phi only went to pi, it might be OK. I would have to think about that. 
Yeah, um, I was just thinking because like the reason does isn't that like the reason why you don't go to two pi for theta? Because since uh, phi goes two pi, it gets the entire thing, and so it gets the reflection of the um, theta. Yes, but the thing is here that theta is defined as the angle down from the z axis, and phi is so so theta sort of rotates around the origin, and it's a little bit more three dimensional. Phi mm -hmm. rotates just like it does in cylindrical coordinates around the z-axis, so they're not necessarily equivalent. And I don't actually know the answer to that question. Okay. You would have to do a pretty good geometrical argument to convince me that that would be okay. Okay. Thank you, Professor. No problem. All right. So the next thing that I have to do is just evaluate that integral that we have. So I'm going to sort of zoom away from my setup here and make a little more space. Now you should be able to see what I'm going to do next. Professor, first things, yes. Uh, should we write should we write d phi before d theta? Doesn't matter what order you write them. Um, okay. In I guess Thank in this you. case in it is. In this case, it is more correct to do it that way because that's the order that I've written the integrals. No, d theta is on the inside, so it should be d theta and then d phi, because you want to have this, this, and really dr is in the wrong place, so dr should be over here. I'm going to match them up like that. Okay, thank you. That's, um, there are several different ways to write down your integrals. I have also seen it where people will write, um, I'll write this one, the next one this way. They'll write integral dr, from zero to one, integral d phi from zero to two pi, integral d, whoops, d theta from zero to pi, and then everything that goes after it right there, which is also a completely reasonable way to write this. And it helps disambiguate which bounds apply to what. Just so you know, more than one way to write an integral. Um, I'm going to begin by simplifying what we have up here at the top, right? So this r squared on the bottom cancels with the r squared that we got from the differential volume element, almost as though I wrote this problem myself so that it would be easy to solve on Zoom. Then we have sine theta, d theta, d phi, dr. Cool. Nothing in here depends on phi. So I actually don't have to um, do anything except for evaluate this integral 0 to 2 pi of d phi, which gives me a factor of 2 pi. So I'm going to get rid of that to save space. Put that 2 pi in the front. Now I can write the rest of the stuff, e to the minus 2r sine theta, uh, we don't have to do the d theta and dr because they're already before everything else. Both of these things, the, they don't depend on each other either. The variables are nicely separated. So this is pretty easy. Um, the integral of e to the minus 2r dr is going to be e to the minus 2r over minus 2. And where is it? There's a good spot to write this. The integral of sine theta d theta is going to be minus cosine theta. So right, there's a positive cosine. Nope, minus cosine. OK. So since I know those two facts, I can write down the, the rest of this integral. So I've still got my factor of 2 pi. Well, Professor, I, I, I can't see the part to the right. There's uh, Thank you. minus cosine theta. Here, I'll move it down because I need this space. Oh. 
All right. Um, but what you definitely can't see is the very bottom of the board, which is where I was going to write next. So I think I'm going to go there. Now you can see it. So what I end up with is 2 pi. That's from my phi integral. Next, I have e to the minus 2r over minus 2 from my r integral, which gets evaluated from 0 to 1. And then I have minus cosine theta, which also gets evaluated from 0, uh, sorry, not to 1, to pi. I'm going to need to erase stuff now, but I'm going to start with the stuff that's up high where you have already written everything down. Now I just have to evaluate these things. So that turns out to be equal to 2 pi for my phi integral. We're not doing anything different there. Then we have to evaluate. Uh, professor, can you please uh, tilt Ooh, it Yeah, up. my bad. Thank you. My whiteboard is a little too big. I could move my camera up higher. That would be good. I need to find a stack of books to put it on. All right, so 2 pi, looking good. Um, e to the minus 2r over 2, where r equals 1 and r equals 0. So e to the minus 2 over minus 2. That's the r equals 1 version. Minus e to the minus 2 times 0, which is 0, which is actually 1, over minus 2. So this actually, if I simplify it, works out to 1 half minus e to the minus 2 over 2. Lastly, cosine theta evaluated from 0 to pi is minus minus 1, sorry, not cosine theta, minus cosine theta. That's a key minus sign right there. Minus minus 1 uh, minus minus 1. Um, which we get 2. So this whole thing turns out to be 2 times 2 pi is 4 pi, but actually then there's a factor of 1 half. So I'm going to write it as 2 pi times 1 minus e to the minus 2, right there. And since I am handwriting my answers on a hypothetical midterm, I draw a box around my answer. Excuse me. Um, I saw some questions pop up in the chat, I think. Some, somebody is uh, making fun of how I say circle. I appreciate that. So now the moment of truth, your turn, do the same thing. Oh, I need to stop the recording now. It would be weird to record the breakout rooms. I don't even know how it does that. <laughs> <laughs>